so much fun introducing these people. Let's start with, uh, let's start with her. Uh, this woman has been here, born here, and has been the piano teacher here at the college since it began. She's played with the symphony more than anyone has. She's a delight to listen to. She's just, she's just elegance right here at her fingers at all things she does. Please give a warm welcome to Elizabeth McDougall. The next gentleman has been here on this stage all 27 years, as has Elizabeth. He, hel he helped start, found the Ukiah School of Music. He plays all over Lake and Mendocino County with all kinds of bands and chorales. Um, he's really the teacher's teacher of students, has taught hundreds and hundreds of students, and is also the founder of the Allegro Scholarship Program, Tom Ganung. Keep bumping this. What's that? Are you next? <laughs> I thought I forgot somebody. Um, the next performer, uh, he and his family moved here years ago, and then they moved away, and they came back, and they moved away, and they came back, and he plays incredible. He uh, has played with Dave Brubeck, Stan Getz. He's really a fantastic jazz musician, and he lives in Seattle now, but he, we love to bring him back each year for this series. There's two names. His real name is Chris Guthertz, and his stage name, as we all know him as, Chris James. <laughs> we have a new performer on stage tonight, uh, which I'm really excited about because I uh, tried to get her last year, but sh she was unavailable, but she's available this time. She and her husband a couple of years ago moved to Anderson Valley, uh, and we're really thrilled to have her here. Um, she's originally from Berkeley. She's a Grammy Award winner. She's a composer. She composed for Yo-Yo Ma, the Kronos Quartet, New York Symphony, San Francisco Symphony, Houston Symphony. Uh, she has started the Gabriella Frank Creative Academy of Music for Emerging Composers in Boonville. <laughs> and, and she has these guest artists come from all over the world that she knows from her work to actually work with the high school students there at the high school to play with them, to play for them, to engage them. So she's here as a teacher as well as a world-class composer. And it's probably going to embarrass her by saying this. I think it was the New York Times had said she is one of the she's she's in the top 75 most respected composers of all time of women. Please give a warm hand for Gabriella Frank. The next performer moved here years ago, and I still have fond memories of the first time she played here. She'd never played a concert that did not have a program, was not lined out, and was not really classically based. And so we have basically warped her mind and uh, instilled this, this completely zany atmosphere on this stage. We'd love to have her here. She and Elizabeth and another performer will be playing with the symphony, three pianos up here in two weeks. And you all love her, I love her, she's fabulous to listen to, Elena Casanova. <laughs> Next performer moved here, I think two years ago, three years ago with her husband, and once again, we are so blessed to have people of this talent in our area. They bought an old church outside of town, and now it's called the Church of Boogie Woogie. And she actually, she uh, hosts now open mic night at uh, Ukiah Brewing Company every Tuesday night. She just got off the blues cruise. She's getting ready to go on tour with Joe Lewis Walker next week. Let's give it up for Wendy DeWitt. We have extra padding now. This is nice. Oh, you're not starting. Huh? You're not going to start. I don't think 
next set. Yeah, next not. set, right? I know, you guys next set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's this way. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. We have to direct some of them. You know, it's like hurting. Piano. Wrong <laughs> track. <laughs> we should all do that. Uh, I'm sorry to say that um, Frankie J couldn't make it. I know. I'm kind of bummed too. But he sent a friend of his in his place and. Um, I'm not going to introduce him because he wanted to do it himself, uh, so be patient. I'm trying. <laughs> the bench is coming up. The audience is that way. All right, you're at, you're at the bench. Uh, here you go. Yeah, do it. You want the mic or not? Yes or no? That's a question. I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> thank you, folks. Uh, thank you, folks. It's a pleasure to sit in for Frankie J tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have any relets, so we're going to do a song you probably haven't heard before. And we need you to help us sing the last part. It brings a tear Well, I know Well, to my eyes Well, when I begin Well, to realize Well, you know I cry so much Well, since you've been I'm almost drowning Well, in my own tears now And I say, oh, you know I'm going to try Well, just like a child Don't you know my pouring tears Well, I want to tell you, girl, that they're running wild Said, I believe I'm going to drown in my own tears. Well, you know it's true. Well, you know it's true he's lying. And oh, it's going to keep on raining. Said, I know some rain. Can't you? Said I'm gonna be so blue and gonna keep on raining. And I know that rain, rain will pour. And I say, oh, why can't you say you ought to come on home? Well, so I won't. Said I won't be home alone hey, If you don't think Well, that you be home soon Well, it's all right Now I want you to sing Said now drop I need you to help me sing the song, y'all Well, you sound so sweet Let me hear you say it again Everybody sound so sweet, girl. Well, I said, I believe I'm going to drown. Whoa. Said in my own tears. Yeah. 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 Let everybody say yeah. yeah. And oh, yeah. One more time. I want to know, don't it make you feel all right? 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you sound sweet. You did good. You did good. That, was, that lady that was out there singing with the beautiful voice, her name is Frances. Uh, I think she was the only one to know that we were going to do this song tonight. So thanks, Frances. Said it ain't no big secret and it ain't no big trick. I just do what I do. Baby, I just do what I do. You know, I love to play the blues. Well, that's just what I do. And when the going gets a little rough, I just buckle down and I get real tough and I do what I do. Well, I just do what I do, baby. You know, I love to play the blues. Well, that's just what I do. My mama wanted me to be a politician. She said, maybe you can be a good, fine physician. But you know what? I turned out to be just one of those uh, blues musicians. People ask me what? Floats my boat is when I'm playing these uh, funky, funky, funky notes. I just do what I do, <laughs> baby. I just do what I do. I love to play the blues. Well, that's just what I do. Stuck. My daddy wanted me to be a city mayor. That was just his one and only prayer. But boy, was he surprised when I just turned out to be a, a piano player. People ask me what floats my boat when I'm playing these funky, 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 funky notes. I just do what I do. what I do. I think my 10 minutes is almost up now. <laughs> Even though I love to play the blues, I can keep on. My wife said, honey, could you help me with this? I said, no, baby, don't have no keys on it. I can't do it. I only can do things that got keys on it. She says, well, I'm going to put some keys on your food tonight. Thank you very much. say Frank is keep playing them blues brother oh thank you man wow I'm losing the stuff oh man Jesus wow <laughs> every year I hear you play I say I gotta go take lessons from Frankie <laughs> I just never I never follow through with it I gotta go take lessons from you man you do I love your style well thank you is your, well, my, my let's kid. work on this thing yeah get that straight. if you you want to keep the glasses on or off oh, I'll take them off there you go now it'll fit now you're pure <laughs> now you can't hear. Right? It's a miracle. No, I can't see. Oh. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to play for you a, a set of pieces from 17 <laughs> easy pieces for piano solo by Dmitry Kabelevsky, who was a 20th century composer. The first one I'll play is Etude. The second one I'll play is Takatina, Warrior's Dance, and A Fairy Tale.
That was great. Spencer, do you know I, I, I don't know much about this composer. I mean, Kabalevsky? Yeah, I, I don't. He wrote a ton of stuff for, for young young yeah, he, he wrote a couple of piano concertos and a couple of um, sonatas. He was a Soviet composer born about 1905, <laughs> thereabouts. And um, he was one of the few Soviet composers that stayed with the government and con conformed to the Soviet government and managed to be arrested only once um, <laughs> and kept his life. And he continued composing until my young childhood studies and I believe my teacher in high school might have been friends with him. Oh. Um, so anyway, so I was introduced to him as a young 12-year-old. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just noticed this is 17 easy pieces for piano. <laughs> <laughs> easy? OK. It's all relative. <laughs> they yeah, are. But, it's, yeah, but you Chris, know. Chris, one of my students played the one, the Takatina. What's that? One of my students played the Takatina. Dun, dun, oh, really? Dun, 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 yes, dun, right. Dun, dun. That's the easy one, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is easy. I, know, I played many of those when I was a student, too. Mm -hmm. it's, they're great. Yeah. In, in Cuba, you know, the conservatory, those were great pieces for auditions, you know, when we were young. Yeah. All right, Tom. Hi, everybody. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Nice to see you all here today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming. Your uh, attendance helps to support our Allegro Scholarship Program, which I first announced at this event in the year 2000, and we've been going strong for 19 years now, providing thousands of lessons for uh, gifted and talented kids in financial need, and uh, a few grants here and there, and uh, we're very appreciative of the Vogel Foundation for uh, giving us a 501c3 uh, umbrella to operate under so we could get tax deductions for our donors. And we appreciate it. There's some literature out in the lobby. If you'd like to take a look and find out more about what we do, please feel free. Um, I'd uh, like to play a couple pieces that I've written, one around the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> this century. Oh. <laughs> and uh, the other I wrote about three years ago. And uh, it's... <laughs> the sort of thing that uh, I dreamed of doing from the time I was a kid, and uh, along with inspiration from Spencer and support from him and his studio and so on, I got some of my works recorded. And this one is on Redwood Air, which coincidentally, or I guess not so coincidentally, oh. is available in the lobby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. It's called Return to the Heart.
Thank you, Tom. That was beautiful. Good job. So, the, uh, I'd like to welcome another group of folks who are here who are special to me and uh, special to Elizabeth. She and I both hold amateur radio operators licenses and we uh, enjoy the hobby, enjoy talking with each other on the air now and then, and also uh, <coughs> ham radio operators supply emergency services during times of emergency, uh, natural or otherwise, and uh, have uh, done so during the fires that have occurred kind of consistently the last couple of years. So a uh, little warm round of applause, if you please, for the amateur radio operators here in the audience from Lake and Mendocino County. Good, good people to know. Yeah. This next piece is a, kind of a new direction for me, and I'd like to explore it a little further in the future. I hope to be playing more pieces in this genre uh, as these concerts go on. And uh, this one is called Love's Way.
What was the second to the last chord? That second to the last chord. What was your, yeah. What the was last that? Chord? Yeah, second to second, the last. Second to the last chord. Second to the last? Yeah. Well, let's see, that was. That's okay, the one? Okay, D, D flat 13, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's That's a sharp, sharp 11 chord. Yeah, it's sharp 11 and 13, and yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who taught me that chord is on this stage right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I taught you that chord? <laughs> I forgot how to play it. <laughs> He's kidding. It's a good thing you taught somebody else. <laughs> I, I love how the music possesses your body as you're playing. Oh, well, I feel this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love this stuff. Let's be well, That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I've always wanted in this concert for 27 years to wear tails. <laughs> <laughs> Because as a kid in the cartoons, you saw Mickey in tails and he flipped them up, you know, and they waved. So I'm going to give that my best right now. <laughs> Yay! Uh -oh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Try it again. One tail down. Oh. There we go. It's me. Probably yeah. the only person okay. that's ever got applause for tails that's on right. stage. <laughs> well, played. well played. Well played. <laughs> um, I'm dedicating uh, this next song to two people. Uh, one is uh, we, my wife and I attended. How's this? Is, how am I doing there, Sean? I'm trying to keep it there. My wife and I attended a memorial yesterday up in Willits of uh, an extremely loved man, um, Jim Merrill, and uh, who had passed away. And it was just such an inspiration to be in. In, in the presence of all the people honoring him and just an amazing life, and his one of his biggest passions was music, and he showed up at everything. So, for me, this concert is uh, basically for Jim, um, and just remembering what a light he was in so many people's lives. Uh, the second person, um, this is uh, in celebration of your 75th birthday, and you know who you are. He's got it. Uh, you're, I've been very lucky in my life to have uh, been in the music business my whole life up until the last few years and uh, produced a lot of records for a lot of people as a producer, as an engineer. And so one of the blessings was I was able to uh, rent some wonderful studios other than working in my own. And uh, one of the, my favorites was Skywalker Sound, George Lucas's down in Marin. And inside the main room, uh, Lucas at Skywalker Sound, the room Let's just say the room is 80 feet tall. It's large. It's very large. And it's two basketball gymnasiums big. Two full symphonies and a full choir can fit in this and still have room to dance. <laughs> and one whole wall is the movie screen where they would actually, you know, compose, but they would play watching the film as they were doing the scores. So I was there. I had rented it for two weeks, uh, mixing a record. Uh, one of my clients, and, in, and so I had them put their two amazing pianos in the middle of this room, nothing else was in the room, and I just put one little spotlight on it, and I left it there, left these pianos there for two weeks. And so I composed this song on that particular piano because of the room. Here's why. The walls, every 15 feet, had a teardrop 80 feet tall, so the wall would come out and we'd go in, and then Another one come out and go in. almost looked like an ocean wave if you looked at it from the side. And between each wave was a space this big that you could pull out a sound panel 80 feet tall on wheels. And so what this would do was if all these panels were behind this concrete walls, then it was the sound of a four-second cathedral you were inside of, the reverb, really large room, huge room. But if you pulled all the sound panels out, the room was completely dead. You know, it's just dead. And you could also tune the ceiling and tune the floor to the key the symphony was playing in. Incredible room, you know, spare no expense. <laughs> and so I decided to write the song with that reverb I played to the room. The comp composition was to the room. So this is called Walls That Move. Is it on, Sean?
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So your roots in Boogie What's Woogie that? kind of show up in that. Piece. I can't hear what? Your roots in Boogie Woogie show up in that. The in strong, that? The strong left hand repeating figure oh. in a completely new context. Why don't you show us what real Boogie Woogie is? No, no offense. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, don't be starting nothing here. I'm leaving. <laughs> hey, hey, Spencer, what key was that in? What What's that? What key what was key? that in? Uh, that was in the key of uh, F sharp. Key of minor. F minor. F sharp minor. Yeah. It's a beautiful key. I love yeah. writing yeah. in F sharp yeah. minor. Your melody, your melody was, um, uh, how do you say this? And, and then the chord, what was the chord that after you left the R sharp, then you went to a chord that was a dissonant key? A dissonant key? Dissonant. I mean, the first really dissonant key? Yeah. Uh, it was, in the, I think it's H. <laughs> H augmented. Oh, augmented. I think that is a key in German. I, I, thought, key I, in I was German. thinking about it too. Yeah. B is H admitted. It. H <laughs> admitted, that's right. Yeah, the reason he said that because he doesn't know what it was. <laughs> now, you guys Actually, watch what it out. is, I don't remember which one you're mentioning. <laughs> well, you know what I like about Spencer? Oh, I'm sorry. What I like about Spencer is that he, when he writes his stuff, he can remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, my wife, I'd be practicing at home. She says, that's beautiful. Can you play that again? No. <laughs> but she said it was beautiful. Can't you play it again? I said, no, I forgot what it was. <laughs> but seriously, I did the man, same thing. But, I mean, that's beautiful. Your melodies are so awesome, man, you know, and you remember them. And they, and everything else that fits around the melody, the melody stays over there. You always can remember it, even though when you go to those dissonant chords, you know, in a different space, you still remember the melody as soon as you come back to it. Uh, thank you. I wish I've lo I've forgotten um, quite literally 98 percent of what I've ever written, and that's that's. I wish I could do that, but thank you, thank you, Jim. Wendy. Now, Wendy. Now, picking up where we left off yesterday, before the audience got out of here, you had been submitted to at least two theories in, two lessons in music theory, and we may be following on that same track today, and this is a college, so. <laughs> I guess it's appropriate, just beware. Pull out your notepads if you have to. And that reverb was really nice. Can we do that again? Oh. <laughs> oh, that would, we'll get to the boogie woogie, don't worry. If I could just forget about all of those things I didn't want to learn about, maybe once in a while I Not for my dog sleeping at my feet, those big brown eyes loving even me. I'd never.
Just forget. So I wrote that song a, um, a while ago, and I, I recently found out that it meant something totally different than what I thought it meant. So, um, <laughs> How about some boogie boogie? Are we ready? All right, let's do that thing. Are you really ready? Seriously? Seriously?
your heart. <laughs> okay, better. You know, I get the feeling that you're entertaining us, but you're entertaining yourself as well. <laughs> well yeah, we just do what we got to survive, right? <laughs> We know a little something about that. You and I have a little bit of history together. Yes, we certainly do. We met when I was not long out of school. She was my tutor for no, a not job. Really, no. Yeah, you were. You were. <laughs> for a job that we had. God, it must have been about 2001 or 2002. We were working on engraving music. All that fancy sheet music that you buy has to be put into software by people that know programs with horrible names like Sibelius and Finale <laughs> and right. Algorithm to the whatever. <laughs> And we worked for a lady who produced largely ukulele books, if I remember correctly. Oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. everything. We, we did, like, mm -hmm. all the top guitar players and, mm -hmm. yeah, the blues books, everything. Mm -hmm. And Wendy would show me how to array the music. But you also let me practice on your piano. This was before I even <laughs> had an instrument of my own. You blessed my piano. Oh, my friend. God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I should have you sign it. Oh, my goodness. What an honor. Actually, it's an honor to join all of you. You guys are uh, all ma oh. just magicians. So thank you very much for <laughs> show welcoming us, me to your crew. Show us some mm -hmm. of your magic. So um, my name is Gabriella. It's really a, a pleasure to meet all of you. I still feel new to the Valley and to Mendocino, and yet once I left Berkeley with my husband, who's a Napa boy, we haven't looked back. The community has been so warm and welcoming, and, uh, and this is no different here. Mm. I make my career. As a composer, I'm classically trained. I thought for a while I would maybe go after a career as a concert pianist, but then I decided that it wasn't going to work if I kept trying to improve upon Bach <laughs> and Beethoven. <laughs> 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 and what I was always trying to do was to make them a little more Latino. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> so not in Cuban culture, but in Peruano culture. My mother's from the beautiful and small Andean nation of Peru. <coughs> what that means to make something more Peruano, more Latino, is to add this to it. So Peru is a very much a guitar-inspired culture. It's a panpipe-inspired culture. In the 70s and 80s in Berkeley, when I was growing up, there was an explosion of Andean musicians from right. Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador were coming Guatemala. to places like San Francisco and Helsinki right. and Paris and giving these wonderful concerts. And these are concerts by the Indian men in the colorful ponchos and the hats and playing wonderful instruments like canas and stamponios and, and picurios. And these were people that looked like my mother and I would see my mom very happy. And there was tons of this, this kind of thing. Whether it was a ukulele-like instrument that had a body of an armadillo or a classic Spanish instrument. And I remember going down to the piano and saying, that's pretty easy, you just shiver. And you can sound like you're transported out of Berkeley, California into Callao, Peru. So I would actually try to improve upon Beethoven and Bach as a little kid. And that way that children have where there are no boundaries and no borders and no uh, worries about what is uh, racially or politically correct or tasteful. And now I get paid for it. It's actually my, <laughs> <laughs> my living. So um, I'm a little under the weather. I was in New York, and I actually came down with the flu. Okay. But after hearing this music, I feel a little more healed. I always kiss the ground when I land in California from my trips abroad. And I think I'm going to play for you um, a composition that I wrote a few years ago for a very well-known pianist that wanted to be challenged. I ended up challenging myself, too. It's a, it's a tricky little number called Arawi de Charanguista Ciego, a really exotic, beautiful name. And Arawi is not Spanish. It's Quechua, Quechua Indian. And Arawi is a traditional form. It's one of the only ones that ethnomusicologists can accurately ch actually um, describe from the reports of chroniclers at the time of the conquest in Peru. Uh, we know that it was a melancholy form. It was a song form that uh, had Quechua lyrics. It often had pentatonic uh, harmonies, but not always. And the accompaniment would include harmonies that were quite dissonant against something that was very melodic. So you're going to hear quite a play of consonants and dissonance. You will also see a lot of this kind of action, which is, we call these dedos de, del picaflor, the fingers of a hummingbird, which means that the fingers will go very fast. So I'm going to play for you now the Arawi de Charanguista Ciego, which means the Arawi of a blind charango player with the charango being the small ukulele-like instrument.
that, that, by the way, for the audience, that's the official piano player handshake. Yes. <laughs> wow. Takes you to I'm, another world. Yes, That's indeed. very cool. Now, I've just, cool. I've tried to do that before. <laughs> three, two, one, or four, three, two, one. Yes. Three, three, two, two one. one. Or four, three, two, one. Then when you need to cheat, cheat. Two, one, two, one, two, one. Yes. Until you get back on again. <laughs> Until you get back on. No, yeah. this, this, this. And you know what's interesting is that the Yamaha has a slower repeat action. And I grew up on a Yamaha. So I really learned how to do it. And when I go to a Steinway or to another instrument, it's like water. It just, yes. just goes right through. Right. Yeah. I always, I have a, there's a piece of Seguidillas that I always use to test the piano's action when I'm looking at it. You know, I'm going to go play somewhere and... You've heard me play it several times, you know, it, because it's really important. Mm -hmm. That action, you know, it's it's valuable for a piece like that. Yeah, you can't I play mean, it in something sluggish. What I'll know? do is I'll find the, the, the holes in the piano where the action is much slower, and I know to avoid those kinds of notes. I had an experience where I was playing this uh, show at Carnegie Hall, of all places, and I don't tour that much, so this was an exceedingly high-level profile for a composer that plays. And the piano technicians there get paid quite a lot of yeah. money. And so I remember showing the technician saying, you know, this note is sticking. This one's really sticking. And oh my goodness, he just about had a heart attack because <laughs> he has the greatest pianist in the world and has been able to satisfy them. And here comes this Berkeley hippie chick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Pointing out this one flaw. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, I'm a jazz. Have you played it? I haven't played it. Yeah, they, they, play play the end. they play at the end. Okay. Are you it? Yeah. Are oh, you it? I'm it. Then get up there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Chris I'm James. Some repeated now. Yeah. Chris James. <laughs> okay. This is my music. I got I got booted up. Hang on. I used to work for Apple, but this is not an Apple product. And this is my page turner. <laughs> that way I don't have to pay <laughs> someone to this turn my page. We weren't good enough, huh? <laughs> no, you guys are gonna have to pay you. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty picture. <laughs> the reason I am going to read this song is because it's a, it's a new one to me, and I rarely do read uh, at the show, but I thought, you know, <coughs> there's some connection with the Rate family, Bonnie Rate, to this community, am I right? Goes back to, is it John Rate? John was her dad. John's yeah, John was her dad, and a uh, very famous From Hollywood John. singer and, and others. But I love a song that she did that, I uh, just want to do my own version of I can't make you love me. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
job. Thank you. Great team. Thank you. Yesterday, I ran into somebody that heard the show on uh, Friday night, and I think they're back today. And a young man said, you know, you played a song that just he really liked. And he said, I've been playing it all day. So if he's here again, are you here tonight? Is right he there. here? <laughs> he's here? Front row. <laughs> anyway, here is, here is Birdland by uh, Weather Report. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. This is on my CD out in the lobby. Just <laughs> <laughs> and it's intermission. No, no, not yet. No, not for me. They, they're next. Oh, they're not. They're right. You're right. <laughs> I forgot how to play it. Take my page turner back. Yeah, yeah it won't One do me any good. I'll be my favorite <laughs> weather report tunes. 
just a great song. Oh, yeah, I love that song. Oh, I couldn't help but sing along. I hope you didn't hear me. But I yes, did. I did. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't help myself. I could, I, all the help I can get. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. I'm with you. Nina. All right, so I think I'll calm things down a little bit. <laughs> I will play um, Constellation Number 3 by List. Number before intermission. Is it under I'd like to have, uh No, I think it's over there with my music um, in between the. Um, oh. I I like to end with a, the gray book. A piece by Grieg for piano, oh, okay. uh, for four hands, <laughs> not for pianos, four hands, and they're dances, Norwegian dances. And Elizabeth and I um, really enjoy playing this piece. It's very showy. And so we'd like to welcome to go out and enjoy the art show and enjoy the cookies and all the chocolates. I hear there's chocolates out there. And, the and, um, and uh, our CDs, our products. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, come back. All right. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say one final thing. Um, it's a really lovely community, as Gabriella mentioned. And um, I just want to encourage you at intermission, especially the ham radio people, if they would point themselves out right now. Um, greet somebody you haven't met before at intermission. It can be a, a lovely thing. And the ham radio people here are the people who communicate when the cell phone towers go down 
from the fire burns. Um, it's very important that we know who they are so that if we need to communicate to a loved one, um, that, that that's possible. So I just encourage you to, to seek them out and seek each other out at intermission. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.
That's amazing. I think I can be a little sentimental. Would you allow me to? You want to move that mic? Is it the D? <laughs> Should I tie your shoe? <laughs> <laughs> but you are. Yeah. Sorry.
couple of nights ago, uh, some people came to look at the house we are selling, 3106 Buckingham Road. <laughs> Spencer, I gave them the wrong address because I don't want to get in trouble here. <laughs> but anyway, these people had lost their home in paradise. And Gwen said, Sam, come to the piano and play a song for them. Play, You'll Never Walk Alone. And we were talking with Charlie about Rogers and Hart and Rogers and Hammerstein. You'll never walk alone. Wrong song, sorry.
years. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. To where I want to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, baby, come. Where we long to be Percussion is as well as everything. I mean, your feet are doing total percussion. Oh, I mean, I was trying to I figure forgot. out, you know, it's like tapping back and forth. I mean, there, there, there's a lot going on down there too. I mean, it's like every direction. I'm there's... sure they were in a different tiger suit too. So. Yeah. There's a waltz and a boogie woogie. Yeah, and who knows what else? <laughs> but did you like it? Was it fun? Yeah. Yes. What do you, what do you... If you were twitching in your seat, my job was properly done. <laughs> <laughs>
So <laughs> we were all twitching. I, I noticed that you have an, a little owie on your finger. I do. Did that come from playing piano? It did, but there's an extenuating circumstance. Oh, really? I will give a big shout out to everybody who's survived cancer. Oh, oh yay, amen, <laughs> amen. Yeah. Yeah. So on, on Friday night, Ed had his hand wrapped <laughs> and he told us that he does this when he plays in clubs because he gets better tips that way. People are, <laughs> feel sorry for him. But we've all, played, we've all played with something. I came back from a car accident six weeks before this show right. about, what, eight, ten years ago. Yeah. Oh, and gosh. I had broken my little finger. And I had the cast off that day. And I walked in and I said, Spencer, I don't know if I can do this. And somehow I pulled it off. No, you no, the entire time. He, you saw how fast he plays the entire time. The little finger was up like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he was having English tea while he, <laughs> while he was playing. When I used to play in Austin, Boogie Woogie and Honky Tonk, because back then the, the keys were popped off, they, they were cracked ivories, yeah. and you do those glissandos, those oh. runs up and down. Oh, yeah, that's we definitely. would get, I would have um, uh, calluses on the tops of these two fingers from blooding and taking all the skin off my fingers. Yes. You know, going up and down. Mm, yeah. I'll do our okay, well, hence the band-aid. I didn't want to leave any, yeah. like, trails. For yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> Is there blood on the keys? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep this going. Yeah. Got it. So, Thanks. Wendy, was that 3-4 was that or was it 6-8? I guess <laughs> technically it was 6-8. I was, I was counting 6-8. Yeah, I was counting 6. Yeah. We, first, you did it. All, all the piano players all of a sudden went up. <laughs> well, I did the one in seven last year. On yes, I love that. Too. So next year it'll be one in five. five. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is one I uh, composed about three years ago, and uh, it's called um, what is it called? Uh, Ragtag Tango. Oh, fun. And I remember playing this. Uh, I think I've only played it here once, and uh, I don't know why. I was thinking when I was writing it. And she came back afterwards and goes, oh, I love that piece. That, I said, well, I was thinking of you when I wrote it. This is out for you, Margie. Hey, your tails are not. Um... Oh, 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 sorry. Tail adjustment, <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, ah. Thank you. Wait, wait. Yeah. There it goes. There wardrobe, you. wardrobe. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs>
you. Is this on? Yeah. Good. Um, I've decided over the last two or three years to resurrect some of my older pieces. Um, as I said earlier, I've probably forgot 97, 90% of what I've written. Um, so each year I try to bring one or two back. Uh, this piece I wrote, I think, in 85, 86. It came out on the Portraits album, of which that was my favorite record I think I ever did. Um, and that album did, did well for me as well. This particular song um, was uh, just a very a sweet, loving piece. Uh, I don't remember what inspired it, but we ended up, uh, I think Tyler Lincoln arranged it for symphony. And so it, it, was, it was a short piece, but a symphonic one. Um, I'm not going to say much more about it. Uh, this is Eden. Play Mozart for you. Spencer, I was uh, giving you. you such. Uh, What's that? I was giving you such congratulations about remembering your songs. Now you just said that you can't remember it. <laughs> it took a while to relearn it. It's a beautiful song, Thank man. You. Thank you. Beautiful. Sometimes you just like to hold the energy of the music. So here's Mozart, <coughs> 1788. 1788, Sonata in C.
doing a concert in two weeks. Um, we're playing three pianos on stage, as Spencer mentioned. <laughs> and Elena and I and Carolyn Steinbeck, who is the founder of the Mendocino Music Festival, one of the co-founders, and we're playing Bach and Mozart. So uh, I, I wanted to play the Mozart for you today, so I'll give you a little preview of that concert in two weeks. And then it's just coincidence that I'm playing Bach with uh, Tom today. Right, well, um, this, this piece is uh, a piece you, some of you may be familiar with is from Bach's Cantata 140, known as Sleepers Awake. And uh, when I was uh, a college student, one of my professors, Lawrence Rackley Smith, uh, had arranged this piece for two pianos. And I spoke with him about uh, 10 years ago and said, say, would you send me some of your piano work? And he sent me all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, by the way, do, if, you, if, you're here, if you're here and you went to school with me in Kalamazoo at Kalamazoo College, uh, let out a scream or something. <laughs> I had a feeling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I welcome the Whithones. Thank you. Andy, good to hear you. Um, so uh, Elizabeth and I have been rehearsing this, and uh, we just love playing it. We hope you will enjoy it as well. Oh, uh, one thing, you know, if I had a nickel for every time my students would say something like, oh, the dog ate my notebook, or uh, I forgot to practice, or I, uh, uh, I didn't read that, I didn't see that, I didn't do my theory, well, I'd have a jar. Well, <laughs> 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 It's a real jar of nickels, yes siree. And uh, today I'm going to use it to hold up the edge of the music. <laughs> Do you want me to move that, that front sheet? No. What's that? No. No, no, no. No, he's got it all No, set. no, I don't need to try to. I, I, it's part of the act. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll see, it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> surprise, or at least it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Tom. <laughs> We have a good time, don't we? Yes, What's that? One, two,
nicely done. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Absolutely. <laughs> Elizabeth McDougall, ladies and gentlemen. That was so nice. Well, back in the Kalamazoo College days, we were in love with the band, you may remember. They were the Beatles. That's right. And, uh, I'd like to play one of their pieces that I've uh, had a little fun with, you might say, and uh, its title is True Today As It Was 50 Years Ago. Can't Buy Me Love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, a little fun. A bit of fun. Oh. Oh, that's a hard one to follow, but um, Frankie and I were talking earlier in the backstage about the value of composing as well as arranging. And at this Creative Academy of Music that I founded in Boonville, I have emerging composers from all over the world that come to work with me and my esteemed performers that also come from all over the world, right in Boonville. And one of the things we talk about is how to get their chops. How do they get their ideas? What's the difference between composing and improvising? All of us were talking about all of this. And I actually think that you can't underestimate the value of arranging. Arranging already existing music to get your fingers deep into the style of, of another artist or a culture that doesn't belong to you. And this doesn't just apply, apply to music. You have artists that redraw Da Vinci or repaint Picasso. Benjamin Franklin was famous for rewriting essays of writers before him. So I have done this too. One of my heroes is the composer Bela Bartok. He was born in 1881 and died in 45. He was Hungarian and his deep passion was to rescue the music of the people that were being wiped out by the Nazis, the gypsies, the folkloric Jews of Eastern European and countries that don't even exist nowadays. 
In my own fashion, I've tried to do something like this in Peru, and I have arranged a lot of tunes, trying to bring them, in, bring them into the classical idiom. So I'm gonna play for you a short lullaby that I think is really touching, both in this melody, which I'll play for you first, so you can follow the arrangement afterwards. It's uh, based off an A minor pentatonic scale. It really just uses just a few notes. And then repeats that. And there's a middle section, very brief, and then it comes back. And the lyrics are of a young mother who's singing to her, her child, a baby. And she's saying that, I don't have food to put in your belly. I can't get you gordito, I can't get you fat off of food, so I'm gonna feed you my love instead and get you chubby that way. Touchy. That Hi. just leaves me going, ooh. Yeah, just yeah. ooh. <laughs> I love, I mean, It's interesting just, how. Just, I was talking to you backstage, how your voicings, how you think about this, just fascinates me. You know, that you're putting the chords against such, uh, such a beautiful melody, and it's, so, it's very Bartok. You're right, yeah. it's a very Bartok mm -hmm. in his writing. Well done. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> what key was that? What key was that? Kind of A minor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a dash of hot sauce and yeah. a little bit of spike. And yeah. And some Bella Bar talk in there. <laughs> have you ever asked John Cage what key was that? <laughs> no. He never got to meet John Cage. No. Uh, <laughs> he would have asked, probably. Um, maybe I'll just go up right go now. Yeah, go for it. Um, does that dress I, leave lines <laughs> on your back? Is it, you know? No, it's actually very comfortable. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> he was wondering if it leaves line behind, you know. No. <laughs> no, it's... Um, it let's it's see. a beautiful dress, and it also looks like your back is in jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> My, <laughs> never mind. Um... <laughs> I feel it more in here, really. <laughs> Suck it in. Um, 
I, um, I'm really, <laughs> I wanted to actually thank all the volunteers that, um, yes, not yeah. just the uh, Ukai Community Concert volunteers, but very special people close to my heart, which have not been mentioned, and that is Brian Hanson, my just handsome husband, and my lovely daughter, who have been at the CD table for yeah. all three yeah. nights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, one second, real quickly. I also forgot to thank Matt, who heads up all the ushers and has been doing it for 20 years. Oh, wow. Volunteer, thank you, Matt, and all the ushers. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. <laughs> one more? Yeah. What? Sure. We're gonna steal your, you're stealing your thunder here. I'd We're like to thank my mother and my father <laughs> for giving me this award. Get the hook. Sit down, the hook. sit down. <laughs> because they don't know. But wait. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know. I, I would like to. Anybody else would like to thank yeah, anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a thank you, but the, the concert's being videoed. So, in case you didn't have your own cell phone out, and the concert's being videoed, and we'll place it on the a link to it on the ukiahconcerts.org. Yeah. Yes, David. thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> That's right. I think we're done now. Um, well, let's see. Where was I? <laughs> play some music? In Cuba? No, I know. I was going to play some music. Oh, I know. You can put um, the music desk down there. I, I was um, thinking about what you mentioned, how um, the Peruvian you know, people coming up and, and playing. And that's a little bit of something that has, you know, it's hard to come by sometimes when you are in a small town like this uh, and you're from Cuba or Dominican or Peru or other, you know, you don't come across um, your culture very often. And so when you find someone um, that's Cuban, and you're just connecting, you become friends immediately because it doesn't matter, you know, if you just, you know, how long you've known each other. So uh, I have a friend, I, I, there are two people in this town, um, Marcos is Cuban, which many of you know, and we've collaborated on a lot of music and just, uh, he's been a good friend. And then the other person is Diami, and Diami's in the audience today. So I want to dedicate this song <laughs> and I, I love um, at every uh, these concerts. I've taken the opportunity to mix something Cuban with something not Cuban, some something modern, um, some classical tunes with like Beethoven with you know Cuban uh, rhythm. I just have liked to have fun with that. And uh, I've just recently put something together, so it's a little bit fresh and. Um, but I put together Siboné, which is a Lecuona piece, and um, Mi Tierra, which is um, a, a Gloria Stefan song. So mm. maybe some of you guys would recognize it. But anyways, it was fun. We'll see how it goes. Oh, boy, my ring. Never like that ring. Can you hold it for me? Uh. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat>
Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The left There's hand. so many okay? rhythms you got going on. That is fabulous. Uh, thank you. Uh, I got off a little bit, but you know. Oh, I could tell. I, I, I know. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just keep moving my body. You know, I just oh, keep. You're talking about feet. <laughs> yeah, but you oh, got that foot on your feet. How are you heels this high? That's my question. Oh, it's like... easy. Okay. Just try easy. It. Try. You should yeah. try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> that it's... would be a sign. <laughs> yeah, Elena. Elena, the, the left-hand part that you're playing is sort of like a, 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 a Latin montuna in the bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And your feet were going just like you were saying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, cool. you know, I, um, we've gone to this fiddle camp, and one of the things that they talk about in uh, some of the fiddle music and stuff, it's, it's, it's uh, feeling your, your, your beat. If you can't tap and, and you know, play something at the same right. time, you know, forget it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, most yeah. people can learn, and um, even guitarists, you know, it's like, you know, you got to be able to tap to a beat or offbeat, whatever it yeah. is, you know, and be independent. Even there, you know, have guitarists. your hands. There are three even, even guitarists, I don't. <laughs> Especially drummers, too. Especially drummers who've got a different rhythm on all four. Of music. Yeah. There's melody, harmony, and rhythm. And pipe organists who have two feet going with melodies and two hands going with melody. That one blows me away. <laughs> and Frankie. Sort of like this. Is that it? That's it. I love it. Yeah, hold it. <laughs> yeah, we, we just got through rehearsing that for you. That's all. That's what that was. Crystal raindrops fall on the window down the hall when it becomes that morning dew. And darling, when that morning comes and I see that morning sun, I want to be the one with you. Well, just the two of us, we can make it if we try. Just the two of us, baby, baby, you and I. Building castles in the sky Just the two of us, baby, you and I We look for love, no time for tears Wasted water's all there is And it don't make the flowers grow Good things might come to those who wait But not for those who wait too late We got to go for all we know just the two of us We can make it if we try Just the two of us, baby You and I Just the two of us Building castles in the sky Just the two of us, baby Baby, you and I
Got a request for this. Georgia. Georgia. Say the whole day through. Just an old sweet song that keeps sweet Georgia on my mind. I say Georgia, oh my sweet Georgia, no other peace will I find. Just a song so sweet and clear Well, it's like moonlight through the pine Other arms reach out to me Say other eyes know they smile tenderly Open in peace, peaceful dreams that I see all the road leads back to you. I said, Georgia, well, my sweet Georgia, I said, it's the whole day through. an old sweet song Well, it keeps sweet Georgia on my mind Said an old sweet song Old sweet song That keeps sweet Georgia Well, on my mind Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think I got a few more minutes. Uh, in my resume, it says uh, I do a little classical. So. Now what we're gonna do right here, we're gonna let y'all help us out. When you figure out the name of the song, you will know what to do, okay? But right now I'm gonna call my buddy Chris up to help me out of here. If you feel the groove. Shine in your 
your blush, your turn. You know the words, right? Let's try it again. It's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. A fantabulous night to make romance near the cover of October sky. All the leaves on the trees are falling to the sound of the breezes that blow. And I'm trying to please to your calling, baby, of your heartstrings that play soft and low. You know that night. You know the soft, soft, soft moonlight seems to shine. Now you're gonna sing for your blush. Can I just have one more moon dance with you, my love? Sing it loud, y'all. Can I just have one more romance with you, my love? Go, go. unrehearsed, obviously. <laughs> well, who needs to practice? Fresh, I'm gonna fresh do one, a newborn baby. Yes. I'm going to do one to close the show. <clears throat> and um, actually, this is one my daughter asked me to play today. She's here. Paige, you're here. Come on. Paige. Yes. Um, and actually, I, I don't know if I've ever played this in public. It, it was written for a musical that I did several years ago. Um, but since... It, it, I decided to, you know, she said that I don't play enough original material, so this one's about as original as it gets, especially if I don't remember how to play it. <laughs> Make up something new. Okay. You'll never know. It's called Jordan River Walk. How do you like it so far? <laughs> Just practice a little. Anytime. <laughs> One. <laughs> Everybody's the leader.
Wow. Very good job. Thank you. Yeah. Good All right. job. I'll start. Huh? I'll start. Okay. Yeah. You want to hear one more? Yeah. You want to hear one more? One more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get us all in on this one. 